mistakes were made. That's all I'm going to say. Mistakes were made. So let's get right into the making of McCall's M7950. I have this white fabric with navy stars on it. I found these really cute star buttons. I have six of those. I have some single fold bias tape. I don't know if I'm going to need it. And some piping, which I bought this together before I even came home and picked out the pattern. And so this is what I have for the pattern. It's McCall's M7950. I'm going to be using version B. And the truth is I picked this one because I just really wanted to use these buttons. And it was one of the patterns that called for exactly six buttons. And so that's the one we're going to make. It should be fairly easy. I have six yards of this. I think I'm only going to need about three. And so I have three left over if I wanted to do something for major we'll see what happens we're going to get the pattern pieces open and out um, i chose the size a5 and so the biggest size is a 14 so we're just gonna go ahead and cut that one i'm thinking that'll be about right the finish is a 38 and a half so i won't have much ease but that's the biggest size they got so that is what it is so the first thing I need to do is get all of my pieces together for view B. I'm going to need piece number one, which is the bodice back, piece number two, which is the bodice side back, piece number three, which is the bodice front, piece number four is the shoulder straps, piece number five for the pocket, piece number eight is the skirt front facing, piece number nine is the guide for the buttonholes. And then what I don't show you here is pieces six and seven, which are the skirt front and skirt back and just two giant rectangles. So I get started laying the pattern pieces out on my fabric. You're basically gonna make the bodice twice because you're facing it. So piece number one, you'll cut two on the fold. Pieces two and three, you'll cut four. Piece number four, you cut two. The pocket piece, which is piece number five, you cut four. Piece number six, you cut two. And piece number seven, which is the skirt back, you cut one on the fold. And piece number eight, the front facing, you cut two of fabric and two of interfacing. That's the piece I'm working with now and I'm ironing on the interfacing and transferring the markings. So what you just see me do was first stitch two of the bodice side backs, which is piece number two, sections to one bodice back, which is piece number one. And then the remaining pieces number one and two will be used as the facing. Then I pin the bodice front, which is piece number three sections to the bodice back at the sides. And the remaining pieces will be used for the facing as well. I find that it makes more sense to just do the facing as well as the bodice at the same time. 
I think this just moves the process along a lot faster. Okay, so now I have piece number four, which is the shoulder straps folded in half, right sides together, and now I'm going to stitch and turn. So as you watch me stitch piece number four, which is the shoulder straps, I just wanna say don't make the same mistake that I made by not trying on the shoulder straps before you stitch them in place and stitch the facing on top of them. I think the length that shoulder straps need to be varies greatly from person to person, from boobies to boobies, depending on how much support you need or where things are sitting. Tr just try the shoulder straps on. <laughs> So now I have the shoulder straps pinned in place. The instructions are really vague with this, but, um, oh, I think here they go. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be right. Okay, so shoulder straps are pinned in place on those markings. And then I'm gonna get this. So I have to press these seams open and then get this pinned in place. And then you stitch all around it till it's faced. Looking at those seams, I can't help but wonder like how this dress would have done with boning put at those seams, some boning channels and boning applied in there. I know this is supposed to be just a very easy to wear dress, but I can't help to think it might um, have helped give structure there where because of the tie, there's not a whole lot. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments about putting boning in something like this. So what you have watched me do is stitch the facing to the bodice and you just stitch all around until everything is attached to each other and then you are going to um, trim your seams and flip it to the right side and then you need to do understitching. And understitching is a step that I used to skip that I don't any longer because it definitely makes a difference in the garments and the way that the lining behaves. So as I'm doing here, I definitely recommend understitching all the time when you have a facing. So you've seen me stitch one pocket, which is piece number five section to each of the skirt front, which is piece number six. 
and the skirt back with piece number seven at each side. Here you only take up a three eighths of an inch seam allowance, which is one centimeter, instead of the normal five eighths of a seam allowance that's used in the rest of the garments. So once I did that, I pressed the seam allowances towards the pocket. And now I am pinning the skirt front to the skirt back at the sides, leaving the leaving it free between the large circles. You're gonna stitch the pocket edges together at the side seams. Then we'll clip back the seam allowances above and below the pockets. Turn the pockets toward the front along the seam lines and press. And here, I don't think I stitched far enough because on my finished garment, you can still see the markings that um, I put on there to let me know where to stop. So I stopped a little short of that I don't think it made much difference with my pockets, um, but just something to be mindful. Make sure you're stitching all the way and using the correct seam allowance and trimming back those seam allowances. And now it is time to gather down this skirt. Everybody knows I love a simple gathered skirt. I've started to do three rows of gathering stitches as I think it makes everything lay a little bit smoother. Um, I always have trouble getting everything pinned smooth without catching the fabric in a weird way where I have to then unpick it. So I've started doing three rows of gathering stitches. Takes a little bit longer, but I definitely think the outcome is worth it. But then you do have to remove all of those gathering stitches. That's also a step that I used to skip, but I definitely think that it's worth the little added time because then the skirt um, adjusts how it's supposed to be from the gathers to the fullness. And I just think it makes for a neater looking garment. What you see me doing here is pinning on the front facing pieces with the interface attached. I did forget to finish the edge of this, so you'll see me pin that back as well which is what I'm doing here. And so when I stitch the facing on at the sewing machine, I'll also finish the edge because I somehow skipped that step, but it's just fine to do it all at the same time at the sewing machine. So you've seen me stitch that facing on and work on gathering the skirt down, which took forever. And so now I am just pinning everything in place how I want the gathers to be. And then I'm going to stitch everything down by hand. So that way I don't have all of these pins when I get to the sewing machine. They're always just a hassle for me and it ends up being a whole thing. And once I have it all basted in place, then I can sort of check my gathers a little bit more and make sure everything's just laying as it should lay. And then I will remove all of the gathering threads as well as the basting stitches before I um, close everything up. So that is what you see me doing here. This dress is moving along so very quickly. Um, I've really enjoyed the process of sewing it. I do feel like I practiced um, my techniques along the way. I'm trying to get neater about my sewing. I'm trying to not skip steps or take shortcuts. And so I'm very, um, I'm very pleased with the growth I've been having recently, as well as the content I've been making. Let me know what you think about it. And then you're gonna put the buttonhole guide on here which <laughs> it calls for seven but i only have six so it is what it is so we're going to put the buttonholes in so the buttons on hem the bottom and this is done 
And so here I am pressing my hem, which I am using a gauge for. I used to just eyeball the hems and that made for quite uneven hems all of the time. And so that's just what I mean by really wanting to step my sewing game up and just make it neater and cleaner and to take my time to do things correctly. And I'm starting to love my garment so much more now that I am doing that. Overall, I did love this pattern. I think it is an, a fairly quick, easy pattern. I think it's great for beginners. I did find a few ish issues just with the fit at the waist. I don't know if I should have raised the waistline or possibly lowered the waistline. It hits just like right at the widest part of my waist. And so um, it's really, really tight. And that makes for just a little bit of an awkward fit. But other than that, there's really no complaints about the pattern, just more so maybe about some of the mistakes that I made, but that aren't necessarily the pattern's fault. Like I said, I wish I had of tried the shoulder straps on for me as I could have used a little bit more support than what I gave myself because for some reason I just didn't try those on and I am not sure why not. I. I think that the opening for me is a little wonky, but I could just have it tied wonky on here and that could be causing this issue. Um, another thing for me was I didn't make my gathers as uniform as I would have liked and it's gathered a little bit more tightly on one side than the other. But other than that, no real issues for me with this pattern and I think it's a good one. And so this is why there are gonna be no cute final photos. It is just a smidge, a smidge too small. I need it like two inches in the waist. And then it could have, it's, it's weird things happening right here. I don't know. And then my straps aren't tight enough. Mistakes were made. That's all I'm going to say. Mistakes were made. Hopefully, I can fit it next 4th of July. So we'll tr we'll put it on next 4th of July and see if I've lost any weight. Because this is where we are with this. But, I mean, it's... It's... It's what it is. But what I'm working on now, I did full bus adjustments. So we will not have this problem again. And I did mock-ups. So the mock-up turned out so well, which is out of that fabric. And the main dress is out of this fabric. So the mock-up turned out so well that I'm actually making two of those. And hopefully, that's coming soon because this, this was a fail. And I would love to try it again, um, and I think I will, because it wasn't hard or even long. So, I mean, it's buttoned. It's just, it's just stretched to capacity. So, yeah, but I do have on jogging pants, so that could be, yeah. I can't blame the jogging pants for like this. So, yeah, this is what happened. Thanks for watching though. Thanks for watching. See you next time. So those are my takeaways. Choose your size wisely. I did the 14 because that was the biggest size that I had. I wish I had a bought the pattern bigger. I've been weird with McCall's weird. Um, sometimes the 16s and 18s are too big and the 14s have been too small as is the case with this. I can fit it. It's just not a very flattering fit and I thought I would be fine with this because of the tie top. I wasn't paying enough attention to the waist. But let me know in the comments what you think of this make or if you've used this pattern, if you plan to, um, what you think of the pattern. Anything you want to share with me, feel free to leave it in the comment box below. I respond to every single one 
and I will see you in my next video that is soon and sure to come.